Mark at Original Customs. I'm going to talk about my micro squirt fuel injection system for Type 4s or 914 specifically. First thing here is the uh, relay board mount for the ECU. I have this laser cut aluminum plate that goes underneath the relay board. You can see the ECU is already mounted to it. Um, and then this will be the top. We got fuses in here. The front of the car will be this way. There's a couple holes here for the screws that mount the relay board to the bracket. So you just take the relay board and lift it up out of the way, slide this in, put that down on top, and then add the screws back there. Um, got a couple wires coming out of the ECU to talk about here. This bundle of three here with the phone jack on the end is the tuning. There's a cable that comes with it. It's uh, from DIY Auto-Tune. I'm pretty sure it's standard wiring um, for all of these, but uh, with a serial connector. Then we have the uh, bootloader. It's this purple black wire in this case. You put that to ground um, to uh, engage the bootloader if you're loading software. There's also a uh, pigtail on the ground for the bootloader um, if you want to wire it up. Um, to where it doesn't come apart. Um, and then, let's see, we've got, uh, where's the other, there we go. This guy, black with purple stripe, is your tack lead. There's a spade connector in the metal for disassembly, but uh, this little bullet type connector is uh, Going to go in your 12 pin that goes in the relay board. You'll have to look at the wiring to figure out which pin, um, but that should be ready to slip into place. Pull the old tack wire out, put the new tack wire in. This is the same harness that has your starter wiring um, and reverse light wiring. Uh, so that's going to piggyback on all of that stuff. Um, fuses here, we've got um, this Connector for the relay board goes where the original fuel injection wiring went. Um, plug that in. Um, it's got the ground turn on for the uh, fuel pump in there and then the power supply for the whole unit. Um, and you can see that just comes in and piggybacks to all these fuses. The fuse sides, we got two for injectors, uh, the coil, idle air valve. This blank one is where the wideband O2 sensor will go. And then this lead goes to the ECU and has the main power. I also have um, this little resistor. That's for the idle air valve. Um, just controls how much it closes. Um, and then this ground ring connector, uh, somewhere near the Rayleigh board, usually forward and down below, but it moved around on a different years. Uh, there's a ground lug, so you can just uh, take that nut off, clean it up while you're there, clean up the other connections that are there, and then add this to it and lock it all down. Um, and that supplies all the grounds for the unit. Um, so on the motor itself, we've got, uh, uh, the fuel lines here, there's a splice connection here for shipping. Um, so supply side goes into the rail here. So that's the pressure from the pump all the way around. And then the long hose at the back is the return. That goes back to the tank. Your fuel pressure regulator here, it's pre-adjusted to three bar and uh, has a vacuum port to the manifold. Um, to lower the fuel pressure at idle. Um, but uh, when you test fuel pressure on this, um, disconnect the vacuum port or do it with the engine not running. There's also a pressure gauge port here. If you wish to add that, you can put it in there. Um, and then I just usually screw these to the rear engine tin to secure it into place, but you can fasten it however you feel is best. In fact, it doesn't have to be here either. You can run that return line and put put the regulator um, <clears throat> where the manifold pressure sensor used to go might be a, a good place to put it. 
We've got uh, four new injectors with adapters in here. They're the Bosch EV14s. The wiring connectors all have a little embossed cylinder number um, in there. Um, when you look up close, you'll be able to see it just to keep those straight. Map sensors right here. It's on a uh, custom adapter I designed and made. Um, there's two screws that pull the sensor off the adapter and then two screws that pull the adapter off of the plenum. That's where the cold start injector used to go, uh, but I've commandeered that location for the map sensor. Uh, we got a rebuilt throttle body here um, with a throttle position sensor on the side there. Nothing too fancy going on there. Um, here's your idle air valve. We've got the lower hose going to the plenum. That's sort of the air out. Uh, the upper connection needs to go to your fresh air box or your air filter box. Um, so we get filtered air. We need that on the filtered side. So you filtered air coming into the idle air valve and then from the valve it goes into the plenum there. It's a bit of a kink in this hose. It seemed to be working okay, but um, that may be a little bit too tight. So that could get adjusted potentially. Um, the idle air valve, because we have that on there, it handles um, controlling the idle speed which means that this idle speed adjustment screw is no longer relevant. Um, I've added a piece of six millimeter rod in there. So that just slips into place and then is basically locked into place with the adjuster screw. That hole that it's in doesn't go anywhere. So there's no chance of it falling into the motor or into the airstream. Um, it's completely blocked off and has nowhere to go. Uh, there's also a bleed screw that was on the throttle plate that's been plugged up. Um, so all the all the alternative uh, sources for air to come into the motor have been plugged so that the idle air valve can do uh, all of the work. The air temp sensors right here, that's just a stock unit. Um, nothing too fancy there. Cylinder head temp sensor in a stock location, a little connector there to disconnect it. Um, it's a custom unit so that uh, it's got its own ground instead of grounding through the motor um, But an original unit could be used in place. The calibration I think is the same um, You would want to confirm that uh, for sure before you start running it, but um, a Stock unit will will work with the system if necessary uh, The trigger wheel is behind the fan uh, and the sensor. There's a connector for that this uh, sort of braided wire leads to that and there's a connector right behind the between the oil cooler and the fan housing just up underneath there. Get the VW quad coil here. Um, I've stamped cylinder numbers into these little circles so that keeps everything straight. Um, the wire ends are these NGK plugs that kind of go with the 12 millimeter spark plugs. Um, the uh, you just push in if you want to put seals on them, the factory disc seals. Uh, you take this this part off and then use some silicone spray to slip that into place, and that'll seal against the body. Uh, pop that back on, and then when you install them, you uh, just like a normal spark plug wire. The only tricky one is number three because access is kind of limited, so you have to kind of pull it out and then you have to rotate it to get it out of the place or out of this little gap so you just slide that back in and then kind of twist it down and then seat it you got a few breather connections that also need to go to your uh, filter box um, this side uh, is from the heads and then the PCV valve as well. Those should both go to uh, to the breather box. This was originally into the plenum, so if you want to play around with plumbing this into the idle air valve, um, that might be a good solution to keep the oil that comes out of the PCV valve 
out of your air box and everything. Um, so that would be my first attempt, although you'll need to do some sort of adaptation because this hose size is smaller than this connection. So. I think that's everything. Everything's been pre-set up and pre-tuned um, to get it running and I'll supply you with calibration values but those are also uh, easily seen from Tuner Studio. So good luck.